You know who my next guest is. One of the nicest guys outside the cage. One of the most violent guys inside the cage. Frank Camacho is going to be taking on Brock Weaver, UFC Fight Night on September 12th. Frank, how's it going, man? Very good, James. Very good. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, of course. It's like mandatory at this point. Uh, every time you got a fight coming up, <laughs> Frank, always such a positive guy. Um, I, I got to know, though, you were telling me off air that uh, you're in California. Did you end up going back home after the last fight or did you just stay? Yes, after the last fight. Uh, th yeah, right after the next day, flew back home. Um, home quarantine for two weeks and then was able to get back into training and yeah, all this and that. So then we found out about this fight. Uh, yeah, immediately got tested to make sure that, you know, everything was squared away, uh, got on a plane, and I've been out here uh, for about two weeks. Awesome. That sounds good. And I mentioned, obviously, uh, you know, flying from back home. Uh, there was another fighter from Guam, I'm sure you saw last weekend, pick up a huge win uh, in the uh, in the bantamweight division. Uh, Trevin Jones getting that win over uh, Tamir Valley. What did you think of that? Because I know there's not a lot of fighters from Guam in the UFC. Yeah, so actually, you know, what was cool is that, you know, Trevin and I, we were training at Spike 22 um, prior to his, uh, I'm obviously to that fight, he left to Vegas and with the um, hope that he'd get on. That's the cool part of the story, right? That's, he even guaranteed that's a fight. The, no, no, he flew out to Vegas. There's, you know, there's a, the the Guam community is pretty small, you know, but it's a pretty tight knit community. He went out there, he stayed ready, and dude, this is exactly what happened. He he took the fight on like a few days' notice and still freaking got a upset victory it was amazing man he soldiered through that first round and he came in man landed that right hook you know yeah all she wrote yeah that was awesome, happy man. for the guy happy for the guy you know and and trev trev's trev's been a guy that's uh uh he been grinding since ever since he's a, he's a hard worker and uh it's so nice to to, to see that you know because you only you only see like man you only saw like seven minutes of him but uh you know I, i've had the privilege to kind of see him just continue to train when there was almost when when uh, opportunity seemed like it wasn't even there. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's great to see and glad to get the uh, the perspective from you on this one because I knew you'd be watching that fight. Uh, just all the circumstances and like I don't think that's ever happened where someone's like just flown up to Vegas hoping they'd get a fight and it ended up working out. So good on him. Yeah, I told him to buy a lottery ticket. He's his luck's uh, <laughs> pretty well, so, so that's right. good. Um, speaking of uh, short notice switch ups, man, your last fight. You know, I do feel for you, uh, Frank, because you know you're a guy who'll fight anyone anytime. You had an opponent switch up what a couple days before you were supposed to fight, and then obviously I know the result wasn't what you wanted. But uh, you know, what, what did you take away from that fight? Because it's tough when, you know, I think people always look at the guy who's taking it on short notice, but never about the original opponent having to actually take the new opponent. So what were your thoughts on the fight? Um, if anything, uh, what, you know, thinking about it now, everything leading up to that fight was just very different, you know? Uh, you know, COVID, um, fight week was different. You know, you go into the hotel, the UFC usually is like, hey, the UFC staff, what's up? High-fiving everyone, whatever. You know, everyone's in masks. You have to get tested every, you know, uh, every day to get a new lanyard. And, and uh, it was just very awkward, just very weird, very different. Very, very different. Circumstances were very different. And then, uh, yeah, and then the opponent change just kind of happened. It was kind of like, oh, wow, whatever, you know. If anything, I was just super stoked that, that uh, we were able to continue to fight and and to fight um yeah you know but that's the game bro you know as martial artists man you 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 have to you have to be able to adapt and uh man i i would and man big up on justin james dude he he freaking rolls up to the occasion you know the the opportunity was there and he took it fucking is such a bummer for me. <laughs> you know no, I know. Like, well, I was, I was going to say, at least you lost know, to a guy who's fuck. like super nice like yourself, right? Like Justin's a total <laughs> class act and stuff. So it's not like you lost to some jerk, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess so, you know. Trying but, to uh, find the silver lining here, Frank. Yeah, yeah, trying here, to find but, the, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you know, it, um, earned, you know what I mean? It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a earned win on him and it was a lot of lessons learned uh, on my end, you know. So going into this next fight, I, I have... I have an expectation of 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 what fight week's going to be like. Yeah, no, that's good. Like you said, you learned something from that last fight that you can bring into this one, which is uh, which is great. So Brock Weaver, uh, what do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? Ah, uh, dude, uh, man, pressure guy, scrapper. <laughs> you know how the UFC <laughs> match me up with all these guys. Um, if if anything, what's uh, what got my attention was is his history. Um, you know, uh, Native American, uh, I, I don't want to butcher the, the name of the tribe, but like, I, you know, I Googled it up and, and I was like, wow, this is, you know, very, very interesting. Kind of like 
a little similar of, of a history, be, you know, with, with my native people and his native, his native people. So it's kind of cool. It's like, uh, the theme of this is like battle of the natives, you know, and, and, and I'm writing off of it. And it's maybe it's something that, that kind of, um, that lets a fire under, under, under my ass to, to, for, to expect a good fight, you know, um, coming from, coming from being as cultured as he is, uh, and how, t and how strongly tied to his culture he is, uh, he, I know he's going to be coming out strong, you know, and there's no quit in him. But then again, that's everyone in the UFC, though, James. You know what I mean? No, so. it's true. But style-wise, I mean, I looked at this fight on paper. I was like, another banger for Frank. I mean, like, the UFC knows what they're doing when it comes to the matchmaking. It's not like you're fighting a wrestler. Like, you know you guys are going to stand and trade, and it's going to mm -hmm. be a crowd-pleasing fight, which is pretty typical for any of your fights as well. Um, so you talked about uh, camp there. Uh, I imagine the two weeks were at Oyama's. That's usually where you train when you're out here? Correct, yeah. So I'm going to be a total of four weeks out here. Excellent. That's good. So who are you getting to work with over there? I know Chito Vera had his big win. I assume he took some yeah. time on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Chito was, was in the gym uh, this week. Uh, you know, Alex Perez, um, jo John Paul, Fernando, all the dude, all these guys. Christian Aguilera, you know, he's fighting this weekend. Dude, uh, you know, the the vibe and the energy is good. Um, and I'm just I'm just super excited. Yeah, no, it's great. And then you got a good amount of training back home as well, uh, back in Guam? Yes, yeah. I was getting good good training with, like, Kyle Uggen. Oh, when Trev was there, Trev Jones. And, um, and man, Roki Martinez. Good gracious, dude. He's a, he's a heavyweight, but, oh, man, just getting some pummeling rounds with him. I was like, good gracious. Hey, he's he's a workhorse. That guy is a workhorse. Awesome. Um, weight cut. It's always something we have to talk about. I mean, you always make weight, but I know it is a process. How is that going ahead of this fight? Uh, this one is, it's, it's, it's going good. You know, after the last fight, uh, man, ran into a stint, you know, man, I, I didn't make weight the last fight. I was a 158, you know? Um, yeah, we, we addressed that. And after the fight, we, I just kept my weight down. So it's, it's good. It, you know, I've never had, I've, I've had abs for majority part of this year. So it's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. There's the indication weight's going to go well. You can see your abs. That, that always makes yeah. sense. So, so that's yeah. good. Okay. The wife's happy. The wife's happy. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I know that for sure. Um, what, uh, as far as your corner, I'm, sure, I'm assuming Colin Oyama, who else will be in there with you? And Alex Perez. Oh, nice. Alex is such a nice yeah. guy. He Here's a good cornerman, too. Like, he's there for Carlos Sparza and everything. Like, how, oh, how much dude. of a benefit is it to have him in there? Alex, let's just say Alex is such an ass. He's such a great teammate with a lot of uh, wrestler mentality. And just a lot of, he's just always just trying to help. Yeah. I think coaching's in his future. I really do. He's just so knowledgeable about the sport. Like, if he ever wants to do it, I mean, I'm not saying he will, but I think he's very knowledgeable about the sport. Oh, no, for sure. And you, you can kind of see that trajectory, you know what I mean? And and what way to freaking mentor, have a have a mentor like Colin Oyama. Yeah. Yeah, one of the best in the game, that's for sure. Uh, so how's this fight playing out on the 12th? Like, I see, I mean, I, I'm going to sound very kind of basic here, but it's like either fight of the night war that goes the distance or someone's getting knocked out. I mean, I don't think it goes any other way. I don't think you're going to see a submission in this fight. Let's put it that way. Man, that's that's kind of how it's gonna, it's gonna be, you know. Like I just gotta just just stick to my guns and 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 you know I kind of it's nice because uh, all the cancel bouts, fuck all my all my UFC career, all lefties. Yeah, that's true. If, if you think about it, you know. Um, well, except for well, just a couple, right? Uh, Jeff Neal, Drew Dober, uh, um, Nick Hine. Who else is another lefty? I was uh, Benio Darush. I was preparing for Alan Patrick, who was a lefty. Matt Frivola, who was a lefty. And uh, and now, you know, um, Brock Weaver, who's a lefty. So uh, just don't switch stance on me, Brock. Yeah, exactly. Mess me up. I don't know how to fight orthodox guys, no. But <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a banger. Um, you know, he comes in and I come in and... I just got to be smart and, and be first. This fight's pretty important. I mean, I, I know obviously, you know, you got to, you're coming into this on a bit of a losing streak here, but I would say that you're an entertaining guy. So, I mean, the UFC likes keeping fighters like you around. Is there any added pressure going into this fight just with how the last fight went, or is it just you take it like any other fight? I mean, I would be lying if there's no pressure uh, in this fight. I mean, there is pressure, but the one thing that I'm, I'm doing my hardest is focus. Focus on the things that I can control and disregard everything that I can't control. I can, I can, I can focus on game plan. I can focus on just training hard and my nutrition and, and 
focus on having fun and and you know just kind of the why's right remember why I, why i do this why do i why do i love why do i love doing this you know it's never really been for the money obviously the money has always been great uh you know like why not why not do something you love and make some money but man i just i love to do it and 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 i and i want to display my craft to the best of my ability on september 12th and and that's the goal focus What's uh, what's downtime been like in California outside of training? What do you get up to? I mean, obviously the calls back home, I'm sure, but uh, what, do you, what have you been up to? Sleep. Yeah, I'm the same <laughs> way. I love napping. I love napping, dude. It's the best ever. That's why. So, so when, when we scheduled this interview, I was like, okay, if I can, if I can just chat with uh, with James, okay, I can get like a two hour nap. In. I'm the I'm same. A, I love two hours is the perfect amount for me. Like I know I've gotten a good amount of sleep if I'm getting two hours. Do you need like eight hours a night? Like how many do you need? How many hours? You know, um, I'm big on sleep. I'm I'm huge on sleep, and uh, and I would. I'm, you know, and I'm so glad, I'm so blessed, honestly, that my wife, uh, like, she knows that, you know, it's not like I'm being lazy or whatever, and I really, and I really do believe it's, it's what you do when you're awake, not so much, you know, people say, like, uh, oh, man, not sleep when you die, or, or grind, and no, yeah, That'll no sleep, four away, hours I'm sleep. the same way, I need to get, I need oh. to get ample sleep, like, even if there's nights when I'm not getting my eight hours, I'll make sure I make that up later in the week with, like, a nap or something. No, for sure, for sure, one hundred percent. I'm, I'm, I'm a big sleeper, and and uh, if I, if I can get, if I can get those in, oh man, we're good. Well, I think someone's going to sleep here on September twelfth. Uh, there's a good segue <laughs> there, uh, Frank. Always appreciate the time, man. Uh, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media, uh, and anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, anything like that. I'll give you the last word. Uh, guys, check me out at Frank the Crank on all social media: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok. I don't know how TikTok's going to be because they're going to be banning it soon unless Microsoft gets it. I don't know. What Instagram the, what Reels. The I think isn't that the replacement? That's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, does, man, I appreciate everyone a part of the journey and everyone tuning in. And thank you guys so much. And thank you, James, for having me again.